Shalom, brothers and sisters. <laughs> I have been uh, uh, told recently that I'm anti-science and I'm against science and, you know, I'm an idiot <clears throat> because I love making fun of these scientific articles every now and then because it, it makes us laugh and, you know, de-stresses us and helps us just have a giggle for a moment at the arrogance of scientists and experts. So, yeah, I've been labeled as anti-science. I'm not anti-science. I think science when done correctly and everything done the way it should be done and them being open to receiving the data as it comes through and not blocking it with preconceived ideas and things yes is amazing and it proves the word of god and god has already told them everything they need to know they're playing catch up all the time and there's multiple examples of this in the word of god all the time so yeah I have a problem with science in that it has become currently follow the money and then you'll see the science. Science is where the money is or what they're told to say or do. Even though empirical scientific tests prove the opposite, they will toe the line and tell you what you need to know. Even though damage that is done medically is proven scientifically, they will still tell you it's not true because this is where the money is. So these are the problems I have with science. And they tell you things are facts when they themselves say and admit that they've been arguing for 20 years about said facts, but they've now agreed. Why? Because the money has told you to agree. So <laughs> it's really funny. And then we have experts like Bill Gates, who has no medical degree, no scientific degree, who was in the computer industry. And suddenly this is our expert on medical issues, on vaccines, on climate crisis, on carbon, on everything. This is who we trust with that information. So you see my problem with these things. Now I want to give you an example this morning. It's an it's a important one. Bill Gates says he's not a science people. He says the science people, right? The whole comment. But I'm going to show you he's not a science people but the idiot, because he says they should be science people, not idiots, right? Science people. I don't plant trees. Planting trees is nonsense, he says. This is the science people he's referring to, him and the science people. Bill Gates has been a vocal advocate for addressing climate change. He told the New York Times that he offsets his own carbon emissions. This is his excuse for why he can fly around with his private jet and do all these things. Through a variety of projects, such as solar panels and buying heat pumps for the poor, from which he takes the carbon credits to make up for all the things he's doing. I don't use some of the less proven approaches, such as, I don't plant trees, he said. It's complete nonsense. I mean, are we the science people or are we idiots? I don't normally call people names, but since he's asking so nicely... The answer, Billy Boy, is idiots. You would fall on the idiot side of the question you have asked. So again, not me calling you an idiot. Your own statement is calling you an idiot. You and the science people. Gates is funding a scheme to cut down 70 million acres of forest in North America. And then, <laughs> this is where the science people come in, bury them underground in man-made vaults and this is going to help control the carbon so let's just have a look at trees for a second and use actual things that they've discovered with actual science all right trees are essential for a healthy planet trees purify the air and combat climate change they provide habitat for millions of of species that protect us from disease. Trees cool down areas like our streets and our cities. We've seen that it is empirically proven. They protect against floods and water pollution when you have trees. Trees ease the mind during stressful times, which explains why they don't want trees around. Trees hold soil in place and prevent erosion. It keeps it together. Trees recycle nutrients in the whole system. Trees sequester carbon dioxide. Isn't that what they're trying to focus on? Trees produce oxygen. 
How boring is that? If only they produced Wi-Fi, we might want to save them or plant a few more. But only oxygen. I mean, that's just for breathing. How boring. Trees feed us. There's so many trees that actually feed us. Trees help maintain the water cycle. They're an integral part of the entire water cycle. Trees help to buffer storms, the winds, the gusts, the gales. They give shelter. Trees produce products for our use that we use all the time, essentially. Trees help control noise. Noise can immediately be mitigated by enough trees. If trees disappear overnight, Billy Boy Gates, so would much of the planet's biodiversity. Habitat loss, the primary driver of extinction worldwide. The destruction of remaining forests would be catastrophic for plants, animals, fungi, and more, says Jamie Prevedello, an ecologist at Rio de Janeiro State University in Brazil. There would be massive extinctions of all groups of organisms, both locally and globally. Hold on, maybe that's what he wants in the first place. More space for his mosquitoes. The planet's climate would be drastically altered in short and long term. Without trees, forested areas would become drier and prone to extreme drought. When rain did come, flooding would be disastrous. No root systems to hold everything in place. Massive erosion would impact oceans, smothering coral reefs and other marine habitats with that flow off back into the sea. Islands stripped of trees would lose their barriers to the ocean and many would be washed away completely. They would disappear, flee, as the Bible says, the islands. Deforestation already accounts for 13% of total global carbon emissions. That's according to an IPCC report, which maybe he should go read. Large amounts of carbon would then run into the oceans causing extreme acidification and killing everything except jellyfish. Good luck eating jellyfish on your crackers. The increased heat, disruption to the water cycle and loss of shade would take a deadly toll on billions of people and livestock. It would become a heat planet. Oh, strange. Revelation says in the tribulation, the earth will be scorched. Maybe Billy Boy is just playing his part in the program to help the scorching come along. So yeah, maybe I'm over the top on this one, but I want to assure you I'm not anti-science. I get excited about science done correctly and science showing that the Bible is 100% on point and they're catching up. Science done right is awesome. Science now at the moment in the world we're living in is a joke. And people like Billy Boy Gates standing in the front as poster children, cutting down trees and burying them to save the planet. Oh, my word. Then I guess I'm okay with you saying I hate science. If that's what you want to believe. I think mankind in his arrogance and stupidity has just absolutely lost the plot. And this happens when you deny God and the truth of him all around us. And you try and operate on your own. To work against him. And when evil flourishes. But God. God sits in the heaven and laughs. And he will return soon. And he has grace for people. And we preach the gospel. And usher people back into his glorious light. By the power of the Holy Spirit. And the guidance of the Lord. And that is what we will continue to do. In the face of everything. And Jesus himself will come and reign for a thousand years and show people how it was supposed to be done all along. God bless. Keep looking up. Shalom.